is sitting there, you know, and then um, Tom Segura was in there, uh, Dave Attell was in there, Louis Katz. Um, in 300 meters, keep right to continue on Wishigoa, Droga Woyawatska, 372. And, I don't know, it was, uh, yeah, dude, it was awesome. Keep right to continue on Wishigoa. And just to see it come to fruition, that was, I think that's the thing that was really exciting. It was like, wow, like, if somebody... Continue on Droga Woyawatska, 372, for one and a half kilometers. Thinks about something and they're really focused on it, that they can make something real. You can actually make something real. Yeah, and I've never done that before. This is the first time I've ever done that. It was, it was, yeah, I think it was inspiring, probably in ways I don't even realize, because sometimes you get inspired and then it, like, just hits you later, you know, but, yeah. but it was awesome, man, thank you, it was cool. My pleasure. Yeah, you did, I mean, you, yeah, you guys are making it happen. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. Yeah, it's, uh, it, but it, it, you know, I always kind of knew you could do something like that, but doing it, actually doing it, and actually watching it take place, and doing it, like, relatively low stress, it was relatively low stress, like, it's, Except for a few issues that you have to deal with at the club, it's not, not, not a big deal. Yeah, you know, and you don't have food, right? Yeah, that's a big one. Oh, fuck. There's, yeah, all the condiments and all of that just stains everything and gets on everything. I feel like oh, now you get roaches and all kinds uh, of shit. Roaches love ketchup. I bet. <laughs> Do they? Nobody loves ketchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like ketchup on hot dogs. Oh, dude, I bet if you could really get it out of a roach, if you fucking tickled him hard enough, he'd tell you he liked it. I like relish. <laughs> relish is my favorite. Yeah, but we got food next door on both sides of us. Yeah, we they got, got everything. Shitty Mexican food and shitty pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Just what comics deserve, too. <laughs> we got some good pizza last night, though. They got some good... I'm, I'm not eating it, but... Uh, uh, Tell got something from some high-end pizza place. Hoboken something, pizza something. He's the funniest, man. Yeah, they had um a lot of ghost stuff. Like, I grew up in Louisiana, right? And so yeah. ghosts, and, ghosts uh, and stuff was a big part of the history, you know, especially in the South. Mm. You know, I think... Um, what do you think a ghost is? A ghost? Probably just some busybody that just didn't get all their stuff done. Ooh. They were lazy when they were alive, so they hang around after life. You know what it's like? It's like those dudes who would hang around the high school after they already graduated. Like, what are you doing, loser? <laughs> In 200 meters, keep right to continue on Slesna, Droga Wojewodzka, 372. Yeah, look at this ghost over here. Yeah, look at this ghost. Oh, they had a dude, uh... Who would bring like uh, who was always dating like an underage chick and he'd come and like hand the McDonald's over the fence at our school. Oh god. Oh and everybody How old was he? Oh everybody thought he was damn Prince Charles. Everybody thought he was like the luckiest guy in the world. But he was yeah, he was old. Keep right to continue on Slesna. Or he just like was an adult and like a twenty year old adult or like a thirty year old adult. Continue on Droga Wojewodzka, three seventy two. For four kilometers. It's exponentially creepier. <laughs> right? Like, if, if you just graduated and you're 18 and your girlfriend's 17, that shit is completely normal. You know? But if you're 19 and she's 17, people start to look a little sideways. Huh? That extra 12 months makes a big difference. If you're 20 and she's 17, people will get very upset with you. Even in places where it's legal. Where, where it is legal in a few places, which is kind of weird. Yeah. And if you are. 35 and she's 17, you can't be a comedian anymore. I'll tell you that. Are you sure? I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, who knows? Right? Who knows? I don't know. But it's um, weird, like, what's legal versus what's okay. Like, it, it really depends on men, right? Because uh, with men, like, if a 17-year-old boy, if if some 40-year-old lady fucks a 17-year-old boy, I'm like, all right, dude, how was it? Yeah. Is she crazy? What's going on? If she's hot and is, he's not coerced and drugged, who cares? But if a 40-year-old man is banging a 17-year-old girl, I get very upset. Yep. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. It's a very different standard for men and women. Well, now I think a lot of women can be, like, uh, they can manipulate men too. Oh, of course they can. They always... We found a faster route via. Been able to 
right, but that never really kind of gets brought into context. Like a lot of older teacher women, they can manipulate a young fella. Oh, they're getting busted all the time. They're always getting busted. But they get this, they get, don't do that again. Hey, stop blowing kids. Yeah, that's what they get. They get a little slap on the wrist. <laughs> they don't go to jail. Do they go to jail for blowing kids? No. You think they don't? No, I think they have like a little fucking trial and everything. And they go, hey, get out of here. <laughs> just get, just go. <laughs> Crazy dick sucker. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get you an Uber. You need to go home. Unless she's trying to get the, the 17-year-old to impregnate her. Mm, then you need to go to jail, you freaky bitch. Yeah, I think I'm in some 17-year-old's life. With a kid, yeah. Well, not just a kid. A kid with you. You know, he doesn't know what's going on. He's just trying to bust a nut. And all of a sudden, he has the responsibility of raising a child, and you're making him get a job, and he's got to fucking pay bills. And, oh, what about his future? He's going to fail science under that. Why? Just because he's not going to be able to do it all. He's not going to be able to have the job and get to school and do it all and take care of the kid. I don't think a child, you know. I well, think the good news is it takes nine months for the kid to come out. So you have nine months of prep time. We get your shit together. Do a lot of men you think use that time to really grow up, and that's that. And you think God? That's why God made it that long of a time period. I do not think God had men in mind when He was doing that. No. If there is a God, I think they just wanted to make sure that the baby's a complicated organ, uh, or complicated uh, organism rather, uh, very complicated, more complicated than any other child of any other animal that's ever been born. Human babies are the weirdest. Really? Yeah. That's why they come out so vulnerable. Every other animal comes out and they can move around. For the most part, although I did see a deer uh, just a couple of days ago on my street, I was going for a walk and the mama, mama deer bounced off a little and I saw this little tiny, little tiny baby deer squatted down and laid down the grass because that's what they do when they're really, really young because yeah. they can't run away from anything. So their best strategy is to kind of blend in and hide. That's why they have those white dots all over their body. The white dots, like say if they're in grass, the white dots obscure their, their shape. Mm. So predators might not see. And I think there's something about their smell. Google that. We have we finally have internet again. Google uh, what is the smell of newborn fawns. Because I think there's like some strategy that nature has with their smell. Mm. Yeah, the baby deer has no scent. So predators that may depend on their sense of smell have difficulty finding the young deer. The mother, always close at hand, tends to circle back towards where her baby lies to get the attention of the predator. Yeah, that's what they did with us. So the, they're like that deer. They're like that. Oh, it's false. It says it's false. Oh, this one's, where the fuck is the first one from? The Henderson State University. What a shit fucking university. No, go to the top. Is that where it's from? That's it. What a fucking... Hey, I got my fucking degree from Henderson. Dan Henderson. He's his principal. <laughs> I asked him what baby deer smell like. He goes, what are you, a fucking douchebag? Smelling deers? This is false. Oh, fucking pop up for a fucking outdoor tactical backpack. This is false. Their unique scent is how their mothers identify them. In fact, they urinate on their tarsal glands daily, even when just a few days old. Oh, they're just freaks. They're pissing on themselves. They're going crazy. Elk, elk piss on themselves when they're, when they're horny. Really? Yeah, they, their dick gets hard and their dick flops up and down when they scream. They go, <laughs> Their dick flops oh. and they start pissing all over themselves. They oh. piss all over themselves. Look I've this, never been that. Guy. Look at this guy. I've never been that horny. This dude's horny as fuck. And he's a young fella. That's not a big elk. Even though they're big, because they're all big. But that is like a, a smaller elk. That's like a 300-inch elk, if I had a guess. Cam Haynes might correct me. Look at his dick, though. He's got a dick face over here. Yeah, fucking scratching on the ground. And he's trying to get his scent everywhere. He's got that limb on him, huh? Mm-hmm. Look, he's got... His dick's flopping around. Ooh, See, he's pissing ooh. all over himself. Thing and then he's yeah. laying around. He's like, oh, they want to fuck so bad. That's a Joe's juice right there. You know that thing is serving, huh? You know what's crazy about them? They're only horny like that for like a month. Yeah, thank God, dude. They would ruin a schoolyard. I mean, that thing. Oh, they do ruin a schoolyard. If they ran onto a schoolyard. If they're horny and people get stupid, oh, take a selfie. Oh, oh. They get fucking speared by a 700 pound super athlete. <laughs> I would hate having that much wiener, I feel like. Really? Yeah. You don't know until you have it. You just have to find the right gals. No, I don't think so. You think so? I think so. I feel oh, no, 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 no. Don't show me this. Don't show me this. Yeah, I think this one was a good section. Oh, you crazy bitch.
bitch, get the fuck away from that thing. Yeah, just Jesus have to go. Christ. The device would kind of attack, but it didn't keep what attacking. Is, why are people so goddamn stupid for the gram? Mm. You know how many people have died taking selfies? They, they, this, I saw this video the other day on Instagram. This lady who died taking a selfie on the side of a cliff. And can you imagine, too, the like, because you know what's going on. You, there's a moment where you realize, oh, I'm taking a selfie and I'm going to die. No, I don't think they realize it until it's too late. See, she, she, she yeah, was posing for a picture here, and the bison sort of just said, get the fuck away from me. Yeah, he just gave her a little of that. Like, get the fuck away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at her. <laughs> She's so uncoordinated. Yeah, she was With her too. stupid backpack filled with fucking Capri Suns. It's <laughs> falling down. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> fucking potato chips in her backpack and shit. Oh, dude, I saw a monkey at, uh, at a young black woman fight over a bag of chips. There's a bunch of those. Monkeys will steal your shit. Cambodia, yeah. They, they will don't care. steal your shit. They will run up on your table and steal your food right off your plate. Fuck you. Yeah. In 200 meters, turn left onto Borovska. Fuck you, give me that sandwich. <laughs> and they just run off with it. They don't care, man. They don't care. Did you hear about, the, was it India where the monkeys started uh, jacking puppies? In India, a dog killed a monkey. So these monkeys went on a rampage and started chucking puppies off roofs. Oh. They would carry puppies to the top of roofs and like, right, fucking chuck them off the roofs. Mm. Like a Maltese. Yeah, monkeys blamed for hundreds of puppy deaths mm. captured in India. So they'd bring them up to the top of a fucking building and throw them. Villagers the claim animals though. were carrying out revenge killings after dogs killed an infant monkey. <gasps> Speaking of which, have you seen what's going on with orcas? Uh-uh. So a female orca, the matriarch, the, the head of this female orca pack, uh -huh. the, the, the head of orca pack. When you say orcas, what are you talking about? Killer whales. Oh, damn. All right. That's an orca. Oh, God. So um, they started sinking boats, and they're teaching each other how to sink boats. Apparently, this boat fucked up one of these orcs. Because sometimes what happens is something will go wrong, and a propeller will hit. They, they, they've happened all the time with sharks. It's happened with whales. Propellers will fuck up a, a dolphin. Head north on Slesna, Droga Wojewodzka, 372, towards Gliniana. Oh yeah, my friend Dave got pushed off a boat and his and he got hit by it. And we went we went over him. He got pushed off the front. Oh jeez, and it fucking hit him. Boat. Where did yeah. mm, I'm not sure. He wasn't that great to start off with, but he <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> but I don't think it harmed him much. You know, it, was like, it helps <laughs> some people. Some people get whacked and it helps. <laughs> it helps them. You know, the Kennison and Rosanna are my two favorite examples. Oh, they both true, get huh? hit by cars. Mm. Wildest people I know. Well, I don't know Kennison, but I know Roseanne real well. She got hit by a fucking car when she was 15. Bad. She was in a mental institution for nine months afterwards. That's wild. She, couldn't, she was a straight-A student. She couldn't count afterwards. She couldn't do math. Couldn't do anything. That's unreal. She got, the, the lady, um, there was a, um, she was driving towards the sun, and the lady couldn't see. And Roseanne walked right into the street when she was 15 and got fucking clipped by a car from back then. You know, those big old fucking sleds. Oh, this thing's meant to eat Caprice or something like that. Some giant fucking. In 800 meters, continue straight onto General Akazamietsa Pulaskigo, Droga Wojewodzka, 372. The LTDs or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some big ass stupid fucking car just cracked her. So the three, three, so this is an orca attack in Portugal. So they started doing this. They say the boat suddenly turned out something hit us. So this is this is from 2021. But what I'm talking about is very recently. Yeah, no, I, th this was in the article that was oh. explaining it. This is just an example of the, of the context. So it's happening quite a bit off the Iberian coast. The Iberian orcas has taught at least nine other whales to attack and destroy rudders. Wow, oh. so it's like a Middle Eastern thing? I just think it's a thing with a particular area where the orcas in that particular area have had problems with people. I see. And so they've decided to let them know who the fuck is the boss. Take action. Yeah, they're fucking up people's boats. It's hard to tell what's happening in the video, but they bro, explain. Bro, I'd bring fish. I'd be like, I'm not that dude. I'm your friend. Yeah, here's a mackerel. Here's a mackerel. Here's a can of tuna. I would bring them. Yeah, but they might be a little upset about the can. <laughs> I think they, I'd put it on a plate. I'd plate it for them. I don't think they like plates either. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, actual full mackerel's the way to go. You know, and tuna's just for us. Like tuna fish in a can. Yeah. Isn't it weird that that one fish we decided to just fucking can up 
all the time. Like, you can't turn into sandwiches, everything. Yeah. Like, tuna salad, tuna this, tuna that. It's all tuna. Yeah, tuna really got the, it's gotten the brunt of it, huh? Oh, my God. I bet other fish are like, oh, thank God we're not tuna. Yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they're like the most canned fish ever. Yeah. Right? Like, what gets canned? They can some salmon. But yeah, but canned salmon, I think, is a little pricier, too. Much more. There's a really good company. I forget what the company's called, but they do wild caught. They all do line caught salmon, so you get wild salmon, not raised, and then they can it. Mm. Which is real good for you. My sister used to have a bass that was in their house, and it was like, it couldn't even turn around in the tank. Oh, wow, that's fucked up. I don't think it minded. I bet it did. I don't know. Of course it did. It lived there for a long time. That's what they say to guys in solitary. I don't know if he minds. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. He's <laughs> by himself. Continue straight on to General Akazamietsa Pulaski Go, Droga Woyawatska, 372. <laughs> Especially if it's a bass, you can't talk to him. Continue on Droga Woyawatska, 372, for one kilometer. You know, he's probably like, get me the fuck out of here, I want to be on a lake. Yeah. I want to be eating frogs, you cunt. <laughs> he's just watching cops out of one eye with his sister. <laughs> He's watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with people? Keep me in this goddamn bowl. <laughs> I'm a bass. You stupid fuck. <laughs> I used to have piranhas. Yeah, of course you did, man. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't think you did? <laughs> <laughs> I had this uh, one house that I lived in. And when I was living by myself, I uh, there was like a, an indoor courtyard to this house. And uh, I, I literally actually consulted construction people. I was going to create like a miniature Jurassic Park in this courtyard. I was going to seal it off. Head northwest on Stanislaw Malachowskiego towards Dombrovskiego. And put. In 150 meters, turn right onto Dombrovskiego. Crocodile. Turn right onto Dombrovskiego monitors in and have like a little hatch where it could release a rabbit yeah. and yeah. watch them kill it and watch them kill it yeah. yeah but then i had like a come to jesus moment like, what the fuck is wrong with you yeah why do you want to do that oh i think it would be i would like in 500 meters turn left onto Comuni parisquier have a small something like that maybe in the home you know i did like to have in the piranhas and was that where you uh and, and were you was it like a goal of yours, do you think? Or were you just like, okay, this is my first place. I want to design it how I want. Or were you just... It was... Because that's I, a big thing to think about. It was my first first getting money. Yeah. First thing I got with money, I got a nice car. I'm like, ooh, I got a nice car now. And then I was like, what other shit can I have? Like, I didn't have any responsibilities back then. I was 27. <clears throat> Free. Yeah. Free as a bird. And um, I just was buying stupid shit. You know? I had three pit bulls. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> bro, that's sick, dude. They were great dogs, though. Yeah. They're the best dogs, man. They're, they're, well, I don't say that. My dog is the best dog. The Golden Retriever, they're the best pet ever. They're just so full of love, and they're just so... But there's something about pit bulls, man. They're just so loyal. They love you so much. Really? You think more than a different type of dog? I don't know, man. I don't know. I wonder if we could tell, I wish we could tell how much dogs love us or, or not, you know? My dog is, like, so domesticated. Mm -hmm. He's so sweet, and he's not, like, remotely threatening to anybody. Anybody who comes over the house, you're my best friend. Like, if you come over my house tonight, he'd be like, Theo! He'd be, like, so happy. He'd be whining and running around you in circles and stuff. He just loves everybody. Wow. But pit bulls are, like, they're just, they just have so much more tenacity they're so angry yeah they're just so full of fucking just raw and they just want to play and just want to kiss you and they just like they're so full of life yeah they'll fucking hug you to your day oh they want to they, when when i would come home from work my dogs would literally like just jump on me just jump on me i would lay on the ground and just swarm me and kiss me yeah they almost have ground game a little bit huh they got a little ground game i used to teach them yeah i get side control them Turn left onto Komuni Parisquie, then slide right onto Zygmunt to Krasinski Go. I'm going to teach him how to hit this game. I'm like, bro, you got to put your paw here. <laughs> got to create space. <laughs> I get him in a free naked joke. Slide right onto Zygmunt to Krasinski Go. In 400. No.
be right onto Plague Paustanko Warsoy. Shrimp, I shrimp, think it's shrimp. bad. <laughs> he, he loved it. Dude, my friend, uh, when I was working, when I was in the, um, I, re, I was in the busboy industry a long time ago, you know, and um, the first gay I ever met, the first gay dude I ever met, this dude, Billy Conforto. How old were you? I was probably 14, right? That was the first gay ever? Uh, yeah. That I ever met straight on. There was, was he 14 too? No, no, he was probably 30. So, and he, um, was like the toughest gay dude so he could like fight and he was gay nobody had ever seen it you know that's scary for a homophobe oh totally <laughs> to fuck you up and suck your dick no, that's the biggest fear or make you suck his that's the crazy part with no <laughs> teeth yeah. you punch so you teeth out oh that's gotta be crazy <laughs> so that changed the game for a lot of homophobes because of like who's this queer you know oh, dude. and then you're like oh if that dude knocks me out and then makes love to me it's gonna be a 0 for 2 to so that's up more than two points. Yeah, it's like a 10 <laughs> round. <laughs> but Billy had pimples, and he sold weed and everything. We get so high, and then I would get so scared of the dogs, man, that I had to go out. In 400 meters, at Rondo Ronaldo Reagana, take the second exit onto Plaque Grunwalki, Droga Wojewodzka, 372. A lot of times. Oh, yeah. Because I couldn't. He was like more... Um, He'd be a lot more comfortable around him and stuff, but I would get high and and then I would just get scared around the dogs. Well, the dog can kill you. That's right. what's crazy. It's like they're it. they're real sweet and everything. And if you get a good one, you train them right, and raise them right. They're so loyal and they're so affectionate. But the power that they have is so wild. Exit the roundabout onto Plaque Grunwald Key. Yeah, I mean Billy would put on like an Adidas. Wojewodzka, 372, for four kilometers. Tracks, you didn't make him like attack things in his yard and shit. So oh, he was like, so he was training him to be like that. He was, but he also loved him, but he like also was like from a tough area. So, you know, there, there was a value in having the dogs be tough. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have that, right? They have dogs that are just protection yeah. around their house all the time. If you live in a rough area, there's no better thing than dogs. They let you know when people are there. Everyone's scared of them. It's not, it's, you know, they'd rather break into a house that doesn't have dogs. Oh, a lot of people, if they didn't have a dad, they would have a dog, you know? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yeah, if you're young, yeah, you have a few dogs. The wife would get a dog a lot of times if they didn't, if they didn't have a husband, I remember. Yep. But there was a lot of dangerous dogs in my neighborhood growing up. You promise when they get loose. Oh, yeah, when they're dangerous dogs, you don't do a good job. Frank Sinatra, he was, uh, he was a pit bull that was uh, bred for hog hunting in Hawaii. They breed, they breed them different, <clears throat> and they breed them, they actually have longer ears, it's 
really interesting. They're almost like Labrador ears because the whole idea is that they're picking up scent. You know, dogs pick up scent with their ears. That's why bloodhounds have those crazy long ears. Really? Uh-huh. As they're running, it's like, you know how you fart and you, like, waft up the smell? Like, Ooh, what is that? Jesus Christ. Well, dogs are doing that with their ears as they're running. They're wafting up these scents. <laughs> so they can pick up little minuscule particles of scents as they're wafting up. And my pit bull had longer ears. He had ears almost like a Labrador, but he was a pure pit bull. But big fucking head, just a jacked body. And he would, oh, like dogs would come, like dogs that were loose would come to the fence and, and fuck with them. And he would go crazy. He just couldn't couldn't get to them and they would be fucking with them and one dog pissed on his fence like just lifted his leg a labrador came by pissed on his fence and so he started slamming his head into the metal bars like so his wrought iron metal bars and he slams his head into the bar and he's like mostly head right and pitbulls yeah. are like 50% head and he's just like fucking <laughs> And he gets his fucking head through, and I hear all this noise, and uh, I'm alone in the house. And then I hear I hear this noise, and I look out the window, and I see Frank with his head, like, wedged between the bars. And I see this dog right outside the gate oh. that was pissing. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to get out. And so I run up to the up to the fence, and I get to him right when his ass pops through the... To, he bent the bars. He got out. And so... It's me running down the street in my socks, chasing this dog. And Andy do Frank, baby. He plowed this dog right into a pile of trash cans, right in my neighbor's trash cans. And I got a hold of his collar right before it got ugly. I'm like, oh, the fucker. So then I had to have another bar welded all around the perimeter of my fence to keep him from separating the bars. Mm. So this Israeli dude came over here. And he was the welder guy and uh, the fence guy, you know. And, uh, He's like, what happened to your fence? And I said, the dog did it. He goes, this fucking fence? <laughs> this dog bent this fucking fence with his head? I go, yeah, the dog peed out there. He goes, bro. I go, yeah, that's a crazy <laughs> dog. <laughs> that's, that's a different kind of dog. Oh, that's Mike Perry, dude. That's, that's a different, different kind of dog. <laughs> yeah, different kind of dog. They don't, they don't care about pain. Pain doesn't yeah. mean a fucking thing to them. They just want to get you. So yeah, get out. Like this dog was like, I don't think the dog was even. I think the dog was like being friendly. Like he's like, oh, oh, smell my pee. You know, he's a Labrador, right? He's just yeah, like, no, he's like, I'll piss over here. Yeah, he thought like, he's, he's, like, he's fine. Frat. He's like, oh, I'm a sick guy. Yeah. Probably didn't even know what a pit bull was. He yeah, was like, this, yeah. This dog's a lot louder than me. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on over here? <laughs> Oh, God, that dog's wearing a... That dog has a chain. I had this one neighbor that had a dog that he never trained. I mean, at all. Mm -hmm. It was basically a wild dog that he fed. It was a boxer. And this dog wouldn't listen to anybody. When they leave him in the house, it, like, if they left the screen, so, like, they left the door open, the screen, the dog would just fly through the screen, just burst through the screen and go out. And then, then he'd come home when he was ready. You and couldn't... All, he just had his own, like, plan or whatever? They were just idiots. They were they were really frustrating. Oh, look at this dog. Mm. Is that a pit bull too? Yeah. yeah. Look at him. That's what he did. That's what my dog did. Oh yeah. He bent the bars, man. Yeah, they're diff they're a different kind of animal. Oh, you gotta you gotta really make sure that your perimeter is secure with a dog like that. But yeah. this this dog was not a dangerous dog. It's just a little a little boxer. I think I just got so nerve. I think just like I would be so nervous around them. You yeah. know and um. But you should be if they're not trained well. And we didn't grow up around any dogs. Oh. You know, except for, like, dogs that were in our neighborhood. We didn't, like, just... And they were more violent animals. We didn't have any, like, dogs in our mm. home or any experience around dogs, you know. I remember first time I ever even met a... Uh, indoor dog it was i don't know a dog could even be indoors right and i was at my buddy scott's house and they had a uh, golden retriever mm. and this bitch came around the corner dude and i was like who in the fuck is that i mean it was like the most beautiful thing i mean it was just like fluffy <laughs> oh, beautiful gorgeous <laughs> Fucking long blonde hair. Dogs. It was like Suzanne Summers. You just <laughs> come in, and I was like, damn, that thing is fucking fine. Suzanne you know, Suzanne Summers. I just never seen a dog look like they had like gotten a good night's sleep. You know, yeah. Suzanne Summers with the five master. So all she had was this spring that just tightened up your pussy muscle. Cause that's what you're doing. Like there's a lot of like it's not squatting for your butt. It's not lunges. You're just tightening up them pussy muscles. Oh, you okay. squeeze that dick. Squeeze that dick. Squeeze that dick. thing's going to gleam by the time you get done with it, dude. See if you can find the, the ad for the Thigh Master. A lot of ladies bought that, too, because they wanted to look like Suzanne Summers. 
Look, it's just a spring. She's still looking good. She's like a thousand years old. Oh, yeah. She still looks really good in my head. One of the biggest blunders in all of television, though. Her and Three's Company. Three's Company. That's a great yeah, show. What well, happened? It was some crazy negotiations. She wanted more money. She was demanding more money because she had become a giant star. And so they basically relegated her. In 300 meters, use the right two lanes to turn right onto Bolsora Kruistego, Droga Wojewodzka, 372. Or two, she wasn't even on the show anymore. Like, one, there was one episode where she made a phone call and she called them when she was on vacation. That was. Use the right two lanes to turn right onto Bolsora Kruistego, Droga Wojewodzka, 372. Or in the episode, her and some. Continue for 23 kilometers. Totally different location, calling them on the phone. And then they eventually replaced her. Yeah, I remember they got a new woman. I think it was like, you know, she got an aggressive agent. It might have been a husband, one of those deals. Yeah, and I was like, I got this. I'm going to fucking, you deserve more money. Yeah, it's just like what happened with um, Call Her Daddy. That's a similar situation. You know the Call Her Daddy podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah. Alex. Uh, Alex. She had a co-host, right? And the co-host had a boyfriend who was an agent. Something Franklin. Sophia Franklin? Is that it? Yeah. And then Portnoy told us the whole story. Oh, he did? Yeah, it was like the dude thought that, like, she's going to be this, she's a fucking star. You need to pay her more. And, like, you know, they had a deal. The deal's a deal. She wanted more, and then there was negotiations. And, yeah. yeah, so her husband, former television producer Alan Hamill, Went to negotiate for asking for $150,000 a week, which was the average that men were earning on television at the time. Okay? It's not television. Yeah, it's like saying, oh, well, brain surgeons make this, and I'm a plumber, so I deserve it. <laughs> and on par with what her co-star Ritter was making, John Ritter, she said she didn't know at the time that Ritter was making more since the three of them had a favorite nation's clause. What's that? Favorite Nations, I think, is like chair. What is it? It's in. I thought that means you all make the same amount. Is that what it means? No, I think it's a. It's a. Inuit thing, isn't it? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's First Nation. Uh, First Nation. MFN provision is a term including a contract for products or services that prevents the seller from selling its products or services to the buyer's competitors for a lower price or on better terms. Oh. I thought this bitch was a Choctaw, dude. I didn't know what they were talking about. Favorite nation's contract. Uh, I want what she's getting. Favorite nation's. You know, agents will ruin a lot of stuff. And they, oh, God, yeah. It's unfortunate, huh? Yeah, omnipresent in entertainment contracts. Certainly it's fair to the post exposure Favorite nation's clause are relatively simple to describe. They're a contractual commitment that no other relevant party will receive better or more advantageous terms from the party making the commitment. That makes sense. So, like, so if you and I were doing a show, we would have a favorite nation's deal where we both make the exact same amount of money. Which is fair. So, Karen, like, they, she probably didn't know that he was getting paid. Because John Ritter was a giant star at the time. Yeah, and that is, um, oh yeah, John Ritter. Yeah, John Ritter. He was incredible. He did a, an episode of you of uh, News Radio. Did he really? Yeah, yeah, he was cool, man. So that was them back in the day, man. It was a great fucking show. Sent down. The fucking some guy ruined it. Didn't he do noises off that movie too? What was that? Noises off? I don't know what that is. Is that a deaf movie? I don't know. Dude, I'll tell you this. One time I was walking down the street in New York and they had a deaf group or whatever, like a gag or whatever, I don't know what it's called, but they got together and they were outside of a bar talking and I'm walking up and I'm like, I thought maybe like the world had like shut off or something I couldn't hear because I'm seeing all these people interacting but nobody 
Be annoying for a girl. Like, 
Jesus, I liked it. What is this stupid fucking giant dick that hurts? Yeah, this never-ending dick. It's like watching a long movie, I bet. You're like, ugh. You ever watch a porno where a girl is uh, sucking a guy's dick and it's just ridiculous? It's just like sucking this microphone. It's too big. Yeah, it's crazy. That poor guy. The poor girl and poor guy. They must both, both be frustrated. Yeah, it's just like watching something. I don't know. A lot of it's much for me, seems like. Man with world biggest penis stuns host with explicit pick. Philip and Josie react to the world's biggest penis. 13 and a half inches. Whoa. His name is Jonah Fallon, New York actor. Wow. Let me see this dude. I don't want that. I just... That's the guy? Oh, my God. That's Jonah? Jonah. That's, see, that's the kind of dick that you have. Ooh, look what at that have. wand on him, homie. That's a hog. That's My a hog. God, boy, dang, yeah. dude. What Imagine getting show? directions from that guy. So he's like, like showing it to them? Scroll down? <laughs> so there he shows it to them. <laughs> that's his hog. Look at that. Oh, Jesus Christ. And what do they 
do to drain it. Oh, look at that one. It's like necrotic. Look at the far left. Look at that. Look at his butt. Look at his butt. Oh, yeah. Click on that. It's like his skin is dying. Oh, Jesus. How long do you have to wait before you go see a doctor? I mean, for real. That seems like a little bit of putting off. Yeah, that guy's, guy's you know, know, he's turning into a tortoise, it looks like. That guy's got that hang green on him. That's him. Some dude's just, oh, he did get by the fucking health congratulations, sir. But imagine just bringing a bag in and people are like, what's in the bag? You're like, my nuts. Oh, hold on. It looks like they stuffed his nuts up into his stomach. Yeah. Look. Like in the left one, he doesn't have a big belly. In the right one, maybe as soon as he get out, you start eating like a pig. So finally. Well, I'm sure once you can go out, you want to go enjoy yourself. You want to go to, I guess, wouldn't you like concentrate on cleaning up your fucking health? Obviously, that's how we're going So what does it say here? It's not started. Over the next nine months, every six days or so, he experienced what he felt like a sensational carpet burn in his groin. Then severe cold and shaking, followed by his scrotum growing uncontrollably larger and larger. It got so bad one day that I stood in my living room and cried, he said. There was a fresh breakage of the skin, and it stunk to knowing, oh man, he's getting fucking stretch marks on the ball sack. You ever had, like, where your toe, like, where your toe connects to your foot and it kind of will crack right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. Imagine, like, that happens on your nuts. That would oh. be so bad. Yeah, because when your toe connects to your foot, kickboxing, I would always get those. Always. That's the worst. Because you're pushing off with such extreme force with your toes, uh -huh. and your skin gets dry, and things get cracked, and I was always getting slices down there. Yeah, I hate it. I hate that. It sucked because you're walking around, your feet hurt. Yeah, you kind of have to walk like this. You get used to it, but in the beginning, you kind of have to yeah. just walk like this. Yeah. Um, what else were we talking about? Man? Dicks. Big yeah. dicks. Oh. Big old dicks. Yeah, if I saw, cause also people are starving in another country and you got this big old dick all, all on you. Right, and you're fat. Yeah. <laughs> like that guy, that actor, he's eating well <laughs> with his giant hog. Oh. Do you think like 13 and a half inches? I would imagine girls like don't swipe right on you. Is swipe right good or which what is it when you choose yes? Swipe it right. Not on the apps, I don't know. Swipe. It's swipe right. right, yeah. Right. So I bet if you say, by the way, I have a 13 and a half inch dick, girls would be like, oh. I think a lot of women would want to see it. So it's almost like come back to my place, come come back to my uh, new house, come see this giant dick. Yeah, or like this, yeah. like like this K, like the animals. Come see my made. Ferrari, right? Like what was it, yeah. Dan? You were gonna make with the animals? Yeah, like a terrarium. <laughs> yeah, come see my terrarium. And then you just you go on the other side of the terrarium, and like put your dick in like a little. <laughs> Nicer. Like maybe they'll think about her when 
when a, when a rule comes up, maybe the, and so that forms their opinions on things too, because that forms their political opinions. Because they find out what the political opinions of the casting people and the executives, which is always left leaning. Yeah. Unless you're on Yellowstone, you know, you, you better, you know, you, you better be wearing a fucking pride flag or something. Like you have to like be 100 percent progressive, liberal leaning, left leaning. Yeah. And so these people alter their they alter their opinions of the world based on what is going to get them closer to the the honey pot. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, I think it's amazing that all of Hollywood has the same political beliefs. All. Except Yellowstone, that Taylor Sheridan guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He seems like an interesting guy. Have he, you met him? No, I need. Uh, I've connected with him on text messages. He's friends with Whitney. Mm-hmm. But I admire that guy. And I, his shows are fucking amazing. People love him, dude. Yeah, and his movies, too. He made that, what, what was that fucking movie, the bank robbery movie with, uh, was Jeff Bridges in it? 